Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and we're taking a look at how to unlock the Maestro class. The Maestro is a character that is locked behind a hidden quest chain and has multiple requirements. First, please note that the quest can only be completed by a beginner class character, and quest progression is not shared between any of your characters. This means you cannot select any class for this character when you get to the level 10 class selection quest. Next, you need to obtain the peanut recipe from the picnic stowaway, and this requires you to complete the first daily quest. There are three quests you have to do from the picnic stowaway before you can access the daily quest, but the first daily quest requires you to have 200 frog legs and 100 bean slices to complete this quest. Once you turn these in and you pick up the second quest for the first time, it will drop the peanut recipe on the ground here for you. Now your journey can begin. The first step to unlocking the Maestro is to become a Journeyman. This is a basic class for the Maestro, and once you become a Journeyman, this character is locked and can no longer become a Warrior, an Archer, or a Mage. To complete the Journeyman quest chain, you will need 1,651 peanuts, as well as 250 gold bars. Each peanut is crafted in Anvil Tab 1, and the recipe requires two hot dogs, one copper ore, and one bleach log. This totals out to a total of 3,302 hot dogs, 1,651 copper ore, and 1,651 bleach logs. This can craft all of your peanuts. I highly recommend having all of these materials ready before you begin the quest chain. Once you have all of your materials ready, head to the vegetable patch in World 1 and find this bush here next to the jungle tree. And to start your quest chain, you need to simply stand near the bush here and drop one peanut on the ground. He will grab the peanut and will open up the quest dialog to start the next quest chains. There's three quests here that you have to turn in, increasing the amount of peanuts that you use. So the second part will require you to drop 50 peanuts on the ground for him, and then 200 peanuts for the third quest, and finally, 400 more peanuts to turn in all of the quests here. Once you complete these three requirements, then you'll gain a stone peanut from this bush. The next section of the quest requires you to travel back to the froggy fields. In the very bottom right-hand corner of the map, you'll find the suspicious-looking rock. And you guessed it, he likes stone peanuts. So drop your stone peanut on the ground here, and this will allow you to pick up the fifth quest. The fifth quest requires you to drop 500 more peanuts on the ground, and when you complete this section, he'll tell you that he doesn't like those peanuts, and he gives you a new recipe for golden peanuts. So pick up the recipe and head back to the anvil in town. At the anvil, with your new recipe, open up the tab and start making golden peanuts. The golden peanuts require 100 peanuts and 50 gold bars each, and the quest requires five of them. So let's craft our five golden peanuts here, and then we can head back to the rock. Once you're back at the rock, go ahead and drop your golden peanuts, and congratulations, you're now a journeyman and have a new trophy, and you're halfway there to unlocking your maestro. Now that you're a journeyman, you will need to complete a few more requirements to do the next quest chain. First, you'll need to gain a bag of nuts, and we'll go over this in just a few minutes. Next, you need to obtain a few googly eyes, as these will be needed to summon a boss. And lastly, you need to get several required skill levels to complete the next quest chain. First, your mining level needs to be level 32 or higher. Your smithing needs to be level 35 or higher and your chopping needs to be level 33 or higher. Once you've completed that, the fishing needs to be level 23 or higher, the alchemy needs to be level 25 or higher, and your catching also level 25 or higher. Once you've completed these required levels and the bag of nuts, you'll be able to complete this quest chain. To obtain the bag of nuts, you need to complete five quests from Goldrick here, who is located in the Shifty Sandbox in World 2. The first quest requires you collecting 15 coins from the ground, and these must be picked up after the quest starts. So simply kill a few sandcastles here and you'll gain your 15 coins. Next, you need to play the catching mini game, and this requires you to complete going through 15 hoops in a row without failing, or completing a total of 90 hoops. So you can play this mini game multiple times to complete this quest requirement. You only have to do one or the other. For the third quest from Goldrick, you need to collect 200 cards each 
from mimics, mafiosos, and sandcastles. Mimics are located in the Mimic Hole, mafiosos are in the Grandioso Canyon, and the sandcastles are in the Shifty Sandbox. For the fourth quest, Goldrick wants a golden plop. This is obtained from the World One sewers and is dropped from poops. And finally, the fifth quest requires you to wear a golden helmet, a golden plate body, and golden plate legs, as well as one of any golden tool. Once you have these items equipped, talk to Goldrick and he will give you your bag of nuts. Now that you have all of the required skills and items, head to the Snellby's area, which is the second to last map in the Yum Yum Desert. Once you're here, head to the Cactus and drop your bag of nuts. There are three quests that you have to complete from the Cactus. The first quest requires you to have the appropriate levels in mining, smithing, and chopping. The second quest requires the levels in fishing, alchemy, and catching. And the third quest, which is the most difficult part of becoming a maestro, is to defeat Biggie Hours, the World 2 mini boss, while having Pete the Peanut in your inventory. Pete is given to you when you start the third quest, and while he's in your inventory, your HP is decreased to 1 HP and makes you deal half of your normal damage. Once you have killed Biggie Hours and head back to the cactus to turn in your quest, you can become a maestro. Congratulations! Please note it is required to get to level 70 on your Maestro class to equip this trophy. This is where he gets a large bonus to his skill EXP and defense, so you don't have to be in a rush to complete this quest line. There are two methods to fight Biggie Hours, and I do want to go over those really quick. The first option is to equip a wooden bow. This allows you to have a ranged attack so you can fight him from range and not take any damage. However, the issue is you only have one HP. So how you avoid this is by simply going down the rope ladder as he gets near you, and then when he gets far enough away from the wooden bridge, you can head back up and start attacking him. But make sure that as soon as he turns around and start moving back towards you, you head back down the ladder. Don't go back up until you have enough time to go up and down the ladder again, just in case he decides to instantly turn around and hit you. The second method is to have as much defense as you possibly can. If you get to above 594 defense, he won't be able to do any damage to you, so you can run through him, and using this method, you can simply punch to auto attack him and eventually take him out. There are quite a few methods to gain a lot of defense. The first is using the best armor that you can, using at least dementia gear or a font gear from the World 2 boss, as both of these start giving bonuses such as this 7% defense just for having the boots equipped. The next thing is to use keychains, as keychains from dungeons can have up to 10 defense here. And the last thing on for your armor is to make sure you're using the highest upgrade stones you can as the world four upstate upgrade stones give you four defense each for your gear you can also spend your floor bows in the dungeons floor bow shop as this does give you a percentage to defense however it can be quite costly to upgrade this to a necessary amount next is using the golden meat pie as this can give you a percent boost to your total defense after that is the Orange Alchemy Bubble, FMJ, as this gives you a percentage to defense from your equipment and also one base defense per class level. For your obols, you can grab the Amrax Obol that gives you a percentage to defense as well as five base defense. And there's also the Circular Obols that can also give you more defense. For your cards, there are a few that can help you give defense. And first is the Oak Tree card as this gives you just base defense. Next is the Forest Soul card to give you more percentage from defense. The Sheepy card can also give you more defense. And lastly, your Golden Gift Miss Box, which can also give you a percentage to defense. For your card sets, you can use the Frostbite Tundra card set as this gives defense and accuracy. Next is if you're in World 3, you do have access to the Shrines, and the Isakin Shrine can give you more HP and defense. This is slow to level up, but it is percentage based, so it can be quite helpful. In the post office, you have the box of unwanted stats, and the second stat here starts increasing your base defense. For your star signs, you have two that can help you. First is Ned Kelly, which can give you 
plus 6% defense and weapon power, as well as Mermolio, which can give you 10% more defense. If nothing else, you can spend some talent points in tab one for Bucklered Up to give you a percentage to your total defense. This is a last resort for me as I don't want to have to keep resetting my star talents. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.